Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzel. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Talking with Docs, if you haven't watched it, it's sort of a talking with Docs about different topics. It's supposed to be entertaining and informative. Often we err on the side of informative and not so entertaining and do apologize, but we are covering some interesting topics. And today we're going to talk about a topic that's close to my heart. Uh -huh. Cholesterol. And should I take medication? Uh, or how can I lower my cholesterol and what's the big deal if I have high cholesterol? And today we have a guest, Dr. Mike Heffernan. He's been on videos before. He's a cardiologist. He's going to give us the lowdown on cholesterol and, and Thank what to do. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, guys. Okay, so very common problem. A lot of people have high cholesterol. Yep. So let's first start with the why. Like why do people have high cholesterol? Actually, let's start with why do you even need okay, cholesterol? Okay, even better. Sure. So, you know, we need cholesterol. Um, cholesterol is an important, uh, you know, component in our body. We need it to make uh, steroids. Uh, we need it to make uh, components in our cell membrane. So we can't survive without cholesterol. The problem is um, when cholesterol is processed in our body and a lot of it is synthesized uh, by our organs, the liver makes a lot of it, um, it, it gets degraded and so parts of it gets used and then there's sort of kind of garbage components that are left over that aren't really necessary. And so these are some of the bad ones you've probably heard about like LDL and it's particularly this LDL you know kind of remnant. It's small. And that stands for low density. Low density lipoprotein. lipoprotein. So it's small. It uh, you know it's able to kind of get into the the walls of the arteries and that's where that kind of the cholesterol buildup happens. Close to LOL but couldn't be more different. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's that, that's the the what and why about cholesterol. Okay. And uh, you know the other I think the other important thing to know is um, what can you change and what can't you change. So there's a genetic component to how much cholesterol we have in our bodies, and uh, on the order of about 85 percent of the cholesterol that you have in your body right now has been made by you. Okay. Um, you can thank your mom and dad. Those are the genes that you were given. Yeah. And um, and so because people often ask, you know, how much can I change through diet and, and exercise? Sure. And on the order of about 20%. Now, okay. now some people can change more. There's no question through some lifestyle modifications. So you don't mean 20% of people can get normal cholesterol. No. The average person can reduce their cholesterol by, by 20%. 20%. Okay. I did that. Yeah. I did that. I had high cholesterol. I went plant-based for yep. like a year and brought it down. About little, 20%? Uh, yeah, about that. But st I was still elevated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so it's a combination of your genetics. So, but some people will say, well, if it's just our genetics, why, why wasn't high cholesterol a big problem before, like 100 years or 80 years ago? Is it because we just weren't testing it or because we lived different lifestyles as well? Or? Yeah, well, we weren't testing it. Yes. Um, and the average age of people in the world was definitely lower than it is now. I think 50 in 1900, actually. I learned that to respond to a comment. Of yeah. somebody and we're 83 right now in yeah. Canada, right? So there's a big change through advancement in medicine and, and, and what you guys do and what we do. So, so speaking about the lifestyle stuff, just quickly then for yep. that 20%, what, can, what kind of stuff can we do? You know, just all the things that we probably know we need to do. Um, so it's maintaining a healthy weight. Yep. It's making sure that uh, that your diet is is good. And so, you know, you mentioned plant based diets. Um, and if it's not going to be as uh, you know plant based or vegetarian, it's about making sure that the diets are rich in you know vegetables, in um, fruits, in legumes, yep. in whole you know whole grains, that sort of thing. Um, less processed food, um, less meat. If there's meat, it's Lean, it's lean meat. More chicken um, wings. And that's high in the process <laughs> I'm category. I'm trying to find something to come on. Yeah. Chicken, chicken wings is not an answer to any of the medical questions we ask no. here. I try no. every time. Um, does, does smoking or your weight have any effect on your cholesterol? So weight does. Yeah. yeah. So Which healthy is weight for show and smoking. Yep. So I even apologize. If, I apologize to our viewers. <laughs> every always, video we're telling you to lose weight. I mean, you know, you're sick of hearing it, but. I thought you were going to say chicken wings. A chicken wings? Yeah. I mean, one thing, I'm going to find something that chicken wings are good for. Alcohol consumption. Right, which is, which is also complicated. So do you think it is um, necessary for people to not drink any alcohol or again, just drink a sensible amount? Like yeah, a, sensible amount. Right. Uh, current you. guidelines here in, in Canada are less than 14 beverages in a week for a man, less than 10 for uh, a woman, and that's yeah. and you can't stockpile it on a Friday and a Saturday night. And obviously if you're higher risk, maybe less than the rest. Absolutely. So 14 alcoholic drinks per week for a man. For a man. And 10, ten for a woman. Well, that's a pretty good. Yeah, you know. And, and to and to qualify right that too, the World Health Organization has said zero. Yeah, yeah. Right? that yeah. alcohol really solves no problems yeah. and causes a fair share. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 
So, and I think the same thing for a lot of the cancer guidelines are like, listen, we don't know exactly what alcohol does, but right. we know it doesn't help. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, what, how, what do our viewers take from that? Like World Health Organizations, Organization, and they've, that, we've seen this before with other topics where World Health Organization says one thing and then other health organizations or regional think, ones say something I else. think you pick it's the confusing. one that makes you happier. I think yeah. people want good news about bad habits. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very yeah. real phrase, yeah. right? And where yeah. you live. Yeah, where yeah. you live. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Because it can be part of your culture too. Unfortunately, good yeah. or bad. So just some people just drink more. Okay. So you've tried all that stuff. Yep. You still have high cholesterol, yep. and now you're like, okay, like, should I be worried about my cholesterol? Do I need to take medication? Believe me, we know that medications made by pharmaceutical companies. This is not a big pharma promotion. We're just letting you know that this is a way to reduce your cholesterol, to reduce your risk of having an adverse event and potentially ending your life prematurely. Yeah, and, okay. and there's no question. Right. And, and you know, there is uh, there are a variety of medications that we use to lower cholesterol. Yeah. Um, most people know about statins, and okay. and there has never been a hate on for a particular medication class than statins, probably in all of medicine. How come? Um, it's it's re honestly it's really hard to know why um, they hate them so much. Yeah, it pro yeah. It, there was um, you know there was one statin years and years ago um, that was pr very potent, yeah. uh, but also had a lot of side effects that had to be withdrawn from the market, and I yep. think a lot of trust got lost as a result of that, and that's kind of proceeded. Okay. Um, so we use statins to lower um, cholesterol. We use other medications. One's called acetamide. Uh, it stops um, cholesterol reabsorption. Okay. We have injectable medications, um, ones that, that kind of go right to kind of where the, the liver is and where the, where the receptors are and, uh, and try and, and, and reduce the amount of cholesterol in the body. Uh, and they're very effective. Okay. So, so it's not just statins. You know, we have, a, we have a lot of things now and there are some other medications that are actually coming online probably in the next couple of years. Oh yeah, what's up with um, those? Non-statin related. In, in fact, there's, there's one called bempedoic acid. Um, mm. It was created by bempedoic a scientist who's, uh, whose wife was intolerant to statins. Oh, wow. And it kind of motivated him to look for something. That, that is I a good a husband. Yeah. yeah. Honey, yeah. what did you do for me lately? I created a new drug. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there are other things that we can look for. You didn't take out the garbage. <laughs> How about that? That would made me happy. That's right. You didn't Nobody have asked you to make a new drug. Just take out the frigging garbage. So you're talking, so it could be stop the cholesterol from coming into our bloodstream, stop the liver from making it, yeah. make it go out of our bodies faster. So some of them are binding agents, right? Where you actually some can get do. rid of them faster yeah. and those have some side effects, obviously. Yeah, we don't use those very much because people don't tolerate don't those. Tolerate right. Those are the oldest, you know, right. cholesterol lowering medications. Okay, so, so the study, basically we always make our, these days we make our clinical decisions based on clinical evidence and yeah. we get our cl clinical evidence from clinical studies. Mm -hmm. Are the clinical studies for statins that good? Are they like cut and dry? Is it, a, you know what I mean? Or is there a lot of bias in those? I remember when I was prescribed a statin, I'm like, are these studies funded by pharma? You know what I mean? To, to yeah. say that you gotta take statins. And I'm sure a lot of viewers are typing comments right now yeah. to that effect. But like, are the studies that great for to, that support the use of statins? I, they are, I, you know, and, and to answer your question, a lot of the studies were funded by pharma. It just makes sense, right? They, sure. they have a medication, their business is to try and, and and so first of all, have a business, yeah. um, but their business is healthcare. Yes. And their business, is, so if they don't have something that's successful and a medication that works, um, they have to move on. Right. And so they're hoping that their medication is gonna work. Right. And so, but it's not just one company, of course. There were numerous companies that all got into this game. Um, and it's not just statins, but all the other medications I was also talking about. And the, the studies are overwhelming. And if you put all of them together over a course of about 20 years, yep. you know, you can expect a reduction in heart attack, stroke, and death of at least 25 to 30%. So and for some patients, even more if they're higher risk. Because that's the question. Someone's going to say, well, listen, I'm not going to take them. What, what's going to happen to me? What are the consequences? Could I be okay? And this is the trouble, I think, is that some people will say, well, my grandpa had high cholesterol for 50 years and nothing happened. Right. He's maybe the same guy who smoked and didn't get lung cancer, yep. drove without a seatbelt, didn't get in a car accident. So unfortunately, some of those people will get through. I they will. meet your grandpa, man. <laughs> he was a good man. Yeah. I'll party with him. Yeah. Some people get lucky. Yes. Some people get lucky, but the majority don't. Right. And, uh, and it's all about risk. So, you know, we, here in Canada, there's a risk-based algorithm right. um, to decide, you know, who needs to be on a cholesterol pill, not necessarily a statin, yeah. but who needs to be on a cholesterol pill, and that's after the lifestyle modifications have happened. Okay. And uh, so are you low risk, are you moderate risk, or are you high risk? Right. And then we look at your risk, and then we look at, okay, 
So let's find out what's your number and where's your risk and do you really need to be on a medication? So right. it's, you know, and if uh, somebody wants to Google the Framingham Risk Calculator, sure. that's probably one of the most common out there. It's something that you can do at home and, and kind of calculate your risk. They are complicated. Those algorithms are not straightforward. I've looked at them, it's like, that's it's a big like, state from Massachusetts, oh, was it? Yeah. Is it nurses? Small little town. It's a nurses. It's a whole, it's a whole, town. Town. whole town. Whole town outside Boston. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I found the algorithm incredibly confusing when I tried to look at it personally, but I could be just, oh, I'll take another look at it. Got, they have some simpler sites. Do they? Yeah. I, can, you, can, you, can you send me <laughs> those I'll, later? I'll send you that. Yeah. Anything that starts with like Sesame Street dot. I'll be Done. Done. There you go. Yeah. So that's a very good summary of, of high cholesterol, what it means, what you should do about it. Um, obviously, discuss all this stuff with your family doctor or your cardiologist or your healthcare provider. But if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And a special thanks to Dr. Hefton for going over this very complicated topic for us. Thanks, we'll see guys. you next time. I'm honest, Dad. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> go. I ran out like a few weeks ago, you but now I'm going to go. Call get, your doctor. Call your doctor. Wait, I was supposed to get blood work. I was late on that. You're, you're, you're a, a typical bad patient. patient. Bad, you're a bad, bad, bad patient. I'm going to patient. clean that up. You don't even take vitamin D. I do, actually, now, after a video three years ago. Good. Yeah, I used to not. Good, man, you guys. I know.